Good morning. This is Crystal Woods with Seasons in the Vine, and it's Fresh Friday. And like I posted on Monday, we're taking a break from Colossians today and perhaps next week because I have a special message on prayer I want to get out to you. Um, so that might be the Fresh Friday next week, not sure yet. Uh, but uh, today we're going to take a little break because I'm going to invite you into a process of letting go and healing that I have been working through with the Lord and with my spiritual mentor and my parents and my husband and and my daughter um, through the last year and five months. And so I I tend to release things when I have a bit of healing and stability. Um, I don't think it's very beneficial to just radically release all kinds of thoughts and emotions that aren't grounded in Christ and the hope of his word and his promises. And so I process and then I get the go ahead to release and um, I call it responsible releasing and I do it with how I teach the spiritual gifts and, and all of that. Like there's a level of... Um, release and you can't, I say this all the time, you can't release what you don't own. And so until I own it, then I really can't release it. All I'm releasing is chaos. And God is not a God of chaos. He's a God of order. And and so when I'm in that chaotic state, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, we have humanity, um, you know, we are human. And so in humanity, we have moments of chaos and immense emotional responses and lots of motives and heart stuff. And that's all part of being human. And there's nothing wrong with that. But just like the Holy Spirit hovered over the waters um, and there was just chaos in the earth, the earth was void and without form. We know God, you know, he puts order into everything. So when it was all crazy, the Holy Spirit is just hovering over those waters and then God begins to speak. And so when I'm in that crazy, watery, chaotic state, I have to be with the Lord and let him do a work. And so that's the first thing that I want to share with you is that it's okay to be where you are, go to the Lord with it. This is where we really have a hard time is when we're feeling the chaos, when we're feeling the emotions, when we're feeling all of these things and we don't go to the Lord. We try to work it out in our own wisdom and our own strength and there, there is no healing there. There's no hope there. There is one healer and it's not you. It is Jesus the Christ. And there's one comforter and it's not you. It's the Holy Spirit. And there's one Father who binds up and wraps us and embraces us. And he is not you. He is himself. And so we need to go to the Lord in those things. So, as many of you know, I have an, an older daughter, Shelby. And some of you have been to my events where she was at... Um, and she's amazing and awesome, and that's why her moving away was so hard. So I'm gonna share the process of that and what that looked like, um, just to be transparent and honest with you all about what was going on and what needed to be corrected in me. And I share that because I know <laughs> if it's in me and I'm a human, there's probably evidence of these things possibly in you and in relationships that you have with your children or with significant others or spouses or parents, um, lots of different ways that we can kind of get into these areas where it's not exactly what the Lord wants and the Lord does a pruning. And so um, she left for Hawaii <clears throat> last year in January. So it's been a year and five months. And, um, you know, she was going to go for a year and it was going to be really exciting and awesome. As soon as we put her on the plane and I drove home that day, I immediately began to hear from the Lord. And I was getting, I mean, obviously I was grieving and crying because we were very close. And, um, <laughs> and the Lord was revealing tons. It was like an incredible download. And um, I didn't really even know who to talk to that day. But what he was revealing to me is like, Shelby was so merged with your life, Crystal. And she needed to have her own life. And I, this is still very emotional for me. And that's okay. But I'm going to try to speak through this. And so I felt immediately like, oh my gosh, thank goodness, Lord, you've called her away so that we can be separate. Um, I joke uh, a lot. I don't really joke, but it was like a serious time in our lives where 
we would head off to Zeal Church because we had gone there to be part of the plant. And on the way in, we'd listen to this great song by Maverick City called um, When I Lock Eyes With You. And then it has this little tag song called Take It All Away. We'd be singing and be like, Lord, if there's anything that's not of you, you know, take it away. Search my heart, God. And then and then he did. And, and, and it was like, I want to be totally devoted to the Lord so if there's anything not of you, if there's any connection, any bond that is more than what you desire, Lord, you know, take it away. And then I didn't realize that it was going to be my daughter. Um, and it's not like a taking away as in a forever thing, but that, that bond, there were parts of that bond that were too connected. It's called enmeshment. And there was just too much of my life and my joy in her. And she needed to have her own life and her own joy separate from me. And I mean, there's just a lot that went on there that I don't need to share the nitty gritty, but too much connection, which can really happen very easily. Um, our family had gone through a lot of trauma and we were very bonded in trauma, but being bonded in trauma is not healthy bonding. It's a very intense bonding of survival, but we didn't need to survive anymore. We had gotten through that season of intensity. The Lord had healed and restored and now it was time to, to be separate and to have only the holy connection to each other that God designed a mother and a daughter to have or a father and a daughter to have or siblings to have or whatever you fill in the blank and so um there was there was this immediate like you know does she even have her own life here and what does that look like and and all that and so the Lord had revealed so much of why she needed to go away and and to just be separate. And um, it was devastating, but I knew, I mean, he downloaded it literally within minutes of her leaving that this is me working. And so you have to trust me. And you need to work this out, Crystal, because you are too connected. And, and so I share that just, you know, take it as it is, just being honest about what that looked like. Um, and she's an awesome, amazing person. So anybody that's around her is like, wow, she's great. You would want her in your life. Um, and, uh, and so that was what started the process. And it went on and on and on. And then um, around August, she informed us that she wasn't going to be coming back anytime soon. And that was like, oh my goodness, wow, another wave of that. Because we did well, we did well, processing, grieving with the Lord, and then another wave of that. And, um, and I kind of knew that was going to happen. Like she wasn't done there yet. And there were still things that the Lord was doing. And and so in that process, when that happened, um, it, I was just a wreck and um, in that chaotic state. So I have to go immediately to the Lord. And I wanted healing. And that's what I want to, to share with you today is like, the Lord wants to heal you. He desires to do that. Jesus came to bind up the brokenhearted. So if there's any area that needs binding up, if there's any area that needs pruning, any area that needs to be put together, God is willing to do that. It's in his word. That's why he came. And so go to him. That was the biggest <clears throat> thing that I continued to do was like, Jesus, I know you understand my heart. And so I'm going to just be here with you. And I'm going to give you a really tangible walkthrough of what this looked like on Sunday this past week, which prompted this message. And so my spiritual mentor, I was away at a retreat with her and, you know, it was like, this is the time to really, to really settle this. And so we prayed and I grieved that deep grieving. And I, that's how I knew like there was just so much here and I didn't feel condemned for feeling it. Um, but I knew I needed to be healed of that and re and I needed freedom from this intense level of grief. Um, because there was, and I even got a word from a friend um, who said, like, don't confuse this season with the season before and think that the season before was better. And I was doing that. Like, I don't, I don't know how I want to live in this new reality. And I don't know what your new reality is for you, but I know the Lord is going to be speaking as I share this process. So I was with my mentor, Kelly, and um, I was at a retreat with lots of other people, and I just let that deep lament come. And it was ugly, messy, like it wasn't a pretty cry. It was like, what? Like, I mean, I thought I was going to puke. There was just so much coming out and um, just really, really intense. And as the Lord led her, she said, where's that prayer that Hannah prayed over Samuel? And I was like, it's in, it's in first Samuel. And 
And so we looked it up and she said, this is what the Lord wants you to do. And so <clears throat> through many tears, um, the, the prayer of Hannah is, you know, Lord, basically she prays for this, this beautiful child to come and she gets this child. And then part of the, the promise is that if she receives this child, she'll give him back to God. And that's where we get baby dedication from. And Shelby was dedicated to the Lord as far as like, I dedicate my life to teaching her about you, Jesus, which I've done. Um, I dedicate her to you, Lord, but I never lent her to him. <laughs> I was lending her to me. I was like, she's mine. I'm going to keep her. And I, I've done this with all my kids. Like, I mean, we just do that as parents. It's attachment. It's beautiful. But sometimes it becomes a little bit more. And, um, and so that was what had happened. And so the prayer is... Um, as long as this child lives, I lend him to the Lord. And so it was, as long as Shelby lives, I lend her to the Lord. I lend her to you, God. And um, and just had that release. So I don't know what you need to lend to the Lord today. Maybe it is a child. Uh, maybe it is what happened to your child. Um, we I know we have re we we live in a world that has fallen, and we have suffered many things um, at the hands of the evil one, at the hands of people's will to just do harm. And th we that can't be denied. It can't be denied that there is sorrow here, and it's what do we do with the sorrow? And so I don't know how you need to give that to the Lord. But that was that was a huge, huge moment, like a parting of the sea moment for me and my healing. And, and the Lord really began to put me back together um, in an intense way and of lending her to the Lord and trusting her. Trust, do you trust me? And, and my good friend Ron, he always says, the Lord came to him and spoke to him like, do you trust me? Trust me, trust me. And I hear that when I when I think about letting her go and just trusting whatever the future looks like is, do I trust the Lord? And I hear him saying like, will you trust me? Like, will you trust me no matter what it looks like? And that's what we're all called to do. But guys, this is not for the faint of heart. This is, this is hard. Like our hearts have feeling, our minds have feeling. And and there's just so much. So with all that said, it's just been progressive healing and, and more process with, with her and I and my husband. And we were just like, okay, this is how we parented well. These are areas we didn't do well. And, you know, we're just asking God to refine us and to teach us how to release and to just be happy and send with blessing and trust the Lord. And, you know, all these things we want to control, right? I mean, that's what parents sometimes just love to do is like, I'm just going to control. I'm going to keep my kids close. Um, and I can keep them from any harm. And, that's just not realistic. We know that's not real, but it's so what we try to do. So these, this is what I want to deposit with you. It, she was here with us last week. We went away. It was awesome. Um, we just had such a sweet time as a family and we're getting so healthy and, um, you know, any areas that still need pruning, we will do that because I love the Lord and she loves the Lord and we are committed to, to walking this out in a way that honors Jesus. And, um, you know, anything that's not of him, I can't have in my life. None of us can have, folks, like anything that hinders us from the fullness of God moving and manifesting in our lives from the kingdom coming, heaven on earth. Um, we have to get rid of that. And, and it can be something like connection that you have with your child. Um, it can be lots of other things. It can be idolatry for your spouse, like so much emphasis on that relationship that if it's not right, you just can't be happy or be filled with joy. And, and see, that's like, that's not Jesus. So there's lots of different things. I know, Holy Spirit, you are just highlighting whatever it is for each person. But this is what my process looked like. Sunday, we were coming back. We were going to put her on a plane very early, like kind of in the middle of the night on Monday morning. And the blessing came on. I knew I needed to process and I felt that welling up of tears. Now I didn't process with her because this is, this is my process with the Lord. I don't need to put onto her anything that's not for her. Um, this is for me to do with Jesus. Jesus is the one that I weep with. And, and Jesus did this so well when we see him at the tomb of Lazarus and we see him in the garden, like I'm in pain, father, I'm in pain, but I'm coming to you and, and I'm going to be real. So don't resist the sadness. That is so much work. 
And I just remember thinking like, I am exhausted. I can't hold it in. I don't have the capacity. I need to let it out. And I crying is, is so annoying because <laughs> it's just snotty and your eyes get irritated, but it needed to come out. It's how our heart speaks is through tears when we are in sorrow. And so it wasn't that I was sad that she was leaving. I was just sad that I wouldn't see her for a long time and be able to hug her or whatever. And so don't resist the sadness but embrace it with the Lord. And so this is what it looked like. There were certain songs I knew would lead me through the process. And so one was the blessing and one was I speak Jesus and one was take it to Jesus. And as those lyrics began to wash over me, I let the grief come up and out. Ooh, and I just grieved and I grieved and I grieved from a soul level. This is like body movement, like up and out intensity, not pretty cry, but guttural cry, because that's where that was. And as I was doing that, I was sitting with the motives of my heart. So don't resist the sadness. Sit with the motives of your heart. What am I really feeling, God? And is this of you or is this of me? How do I need to get my heart in a place of obedience to you, in a place of hope? Are there any motives that are self-serving, that are not serving of you, Jesus? Like, And he will highlight them. He wants to search your heart. Like He wants to be in there working things out. And as I began to grieve and, and process and sit with my motives, and he was working with me, and I'm just snotting everywhere, I, I felt him say, like, open your palms. And so I, I opened my palms because I needed to offer him. My offering at that moment was sorrow. I needed to offer him my pain and my sorrow and leave my hands open so that he could put the healing and restoration that I needed. He will not leave you open, friends. He is not that kind of God. Will you trust him when you have to release this lament to have him put you back together all at the same time? I do this all the time with people in, in my day job, as I call it, when I meet with people one-on-one -on -one and we process loss and tragedy. And so invite the Holy Spirit to comfort. That was the next thing. Came home from dropping her off. It was really in the middle of the night. So I laid back down, but then I felt like that emotion. So let it come up. And I felt like the Holy Spirit was saying, you're grieving without me letting you comfort you. You need to invite me to come and comfort. And so I was like, right, okay. So let me grieve with the comforter. Let me grieve. And this is what we see Jesus doing in the garden. Like he's grieving with the Father. And I, in receiving, the Father sends ministering angels. So he's receiving care. And so invite the Holy Spirit into your grief to be comforted. Don't go it alone. That's not the walk that we have with our Lord. He walked with them in the cool of the evening. He wants to walk with you in your sorrow. And we need to receive his comfort. And so I invited the ministry of the Holy Spirit. He's the comforter to grieve with me and comfort me at the same time. This began to ground my feelings in the truth of God. I have a God that restores and heals and binds up the brokenness. I have a God who brings joy for mourning and beauty for ashes. I have a God who prunes me and I want to be pruned and pruning hurts. Pruning, you feel the shears, the garden shears, ouch. I feel that, but I want it because I want to be only yours, Jesus. And I want all of the loves of my life to be in alignment with you being my first love. And so grounding my feelings in the truth of God and who he is. Unresolved emotions never go away. This has actually been part of my training in formational prayer. They never go away. They lead to anxiety, depression, panic. They build up, build up, build up, build up, build up, build up, build up. And then we're like, well, how did I get here? Well, it's because it's all unresolved. You have an emotional overload that you live out of every day. And, and learning that, I don't want that. And so unresolved emotions, they don't go away. They, they remain stacked up. And so I know I need to make an appointment with the Lord. And so I do that when I feel this happening. And that's what that time was. Uh, with the blessing, I speak Jesus and take it to Jesus. It was a meeting with him. That way I'm not shooting it out sideways to her or to my husband or to my other children or to anyone else, but I'm actually just going right to the Lord vertically, making an appointment with him and opening up that emotional reservoir and releasing it to him, putting it in his hands and letting him take that and then 
put in me, imparting into me peace, which passes understanding, and joy, and hope. So that is my process. So don't resist the sadness. Sit with the motives of your heart, all opening your palms to give and receive from the Lord. Offer him your pain and sorrow for healing and restoration. Pick a song that will lead you through that process. Make an appointment with someone. I, I make appointments with Jesus and I make appointments with my mentor to process these deep things. Or I call my mom or I call my dad. You know, like, this is what's going on. This is where I'm kind of flushing things out. Grounding my feelings in the truth of God and inviting the Holy Spirit to comfort me in this and letting those emotions be resolved. So I want to give you a little glimpse in scripture because I always try to add a little bit of scripture. Um, it's just so beautiful. I'll be in Acts 20, um, verse 36. Paul is speaking to the elders of Ephesus and is he's not going to see them again. He knows that he is short on the earth at this point and his travels won't bring him back. And so he is saying goodbye and this is what happened. And when he had said these things, he knelt down and prayed with them all. And there was much weeping on the part of all. They embraced Paul and kissed him. Like grieving like this is okay. It's allowed. It's in the word of God. Don't stuff. Don't repress. Don't avoid. But press in because you'll be made whole when you touch the hem of his garment. You will be made whole. But if you never reach out to touch him and say, I need you to heal me. You will remain unhealed. That's the reality, we have to go to him. Being sorrowful most of all because of the word he had spoken, that they would not see his face again. And so they were living in the tension of knowing like we are separated now. And they didn't deny it. They didn't go on about their life. They processed in real time. And that's what we need to be doing. And so I hope this blessed you. Of course, you don't have all the details and the nitty gritties, but I think there was enough shared that you understand that even in the most beautiful love that a mother can have with her children, there can be bonds that are not of the Lord and it can put pressure on the child. And um, we don't want that. The Lord doesn't want that. And he wants us to have really clean, beautiful connections with everyone that's in our lives. And, um, and to fully lend and trust him with all things. So I hope this blessed you. Thanks for coming on the journey with me. I did pretty good as far as getting it out without being a blubbering mess, um, but that would have been okay too. I, I do that as well. Uh, much love and I hope this touched your heart and I hope it gave you some framework and tools to, to get healing for whatever it is you need healing from. I'll see you next time.